something rather interesting has happened with Cyberpunk system requirements. You might be aware that the Cyberpunk expansion pack Phantom Liberty is coming out in September and as such CD Projekt Red have released some updated system requirements, essentially raising them across the board versus what we've needed to run uh, for the original Cyberpunk. Now, when I first saw this, I thought these new system requirements were for the expansion pack only, so it, it didn't really flag up massively on my radar. It kind of made sense. Newer game, fancier visuals, equals higher system requirements. But what I didn't realize was how these system requirements were also going to be applied to the original Cyberpunk game via an upcoming patch. We'll run through the system requirements in a moment, but I just wanted to take a moment on this. It seems highly unusual to me for a company to release a game, a single player game, a game that you paid up front for and then raise the system requirements on you via a patch. I can see how this could make sense with a free to play game that kind of rolls on for years and years and years via various seasons. You know, of course, sooner or later, they're going to have to update the graphics quality somewhat if it runs for so long. And that makes sense to me, A, because the game is free to play and it's not really yours in the first place. You don't own it. And B, uh, a free to play or maybe even an MMO style game, they rely on their longevity as part of their business model and they need to go on for years. So it stands to reason that they're going to have to evolve over time or they're just going to look really old and dated. But to have a single player game, a paid up front single player game, raise their system requirements on you like this, I don't know, it feels a bit odd to me. Let me know in the comments, um, am I way off here, am I being unreasonable? Um, anyway, let's look into the specs. Now, handily, they've provided a very nice breakdown of uh, what system specs you should be going for based on the resolution and frame rate you're targeting. Um, other developers take note. So let's compare and contrast to the, uh, the old system requirements to the new. For the minimum requirements, it used to require a Core i5-3570K or an AMD FX 8310. That's going back a bit. Um, but this has now risen to an Intel i7-6700 or an AMD Ryzen 5 1600. Keep in mind the i5-3570K was launched in 2012 and now the one they recommend was launched near the end of 2015. Similarly, uh, minimum RAM requirements have jumped from 8GB to 12GB and the GPU up from a GTX 970 or RX 470 if you're on uh, Team Red now to a 1060 6 gig or rx 588 gig or an intel rk 380 love to see intel getting a mention in here i know they're no nvidia but the fact they're showing up with anything at all to compete with amd and nvidia is good news as far as i'm concerned where there's more competition we get better deals so uh, let them fight so let's just break down the gpu situation a bit according to tech power up and i know these are only round numbers but the 1066 gig is apparently 10% faster than the 970. And the RX 580 is 6% faster than the RX 480. So we're not dealing with massive jumps in terms of like raw horsepower, but they are jumps nevertheless. And the minimum required VRAM goes from three gig to six gig, which if you look at the 970 coming in with four gig of RAM explains the jump. Uh, finally, we should also address that an SSD is now recommended across all settings, whether you're going for the minimum settings or the highest. As you creep up into the ultra settings, they even go as far to recommend an NVMe SSD, uh, not just any old SSD. Now, these minimum system specs will apparently get you around 30 FPS in 1080p with low settings, but it's important to note that in CD Projekt Red's blog post about this, they said the following. It's important to highlight that this doesn't mean the game will stop working on the previous minimum requirements. However, following the next update to the base game, we will discontinue active support for them and stop testing the game on those setups. So what I take from this is it'll probably still work, but they won't be testing against the old system requirements any longer. Therefore, they can't guarantee it will work, even though it probably maybe will. Looking at the other end of the spectrum at Ultra, not Ultra with ray tracing, just plain old Ultra, the recommended CPU used to be an Intel 4790 or a Ryzen 3600. That's now gone up, wait for it, to an Intel 12900 or a Ryzen 9 7900X. That is a huge jump, even if we step things back to their recommended specs, not the Ultra. They're now recommending an Intel i7-12700 or a Ryzen 7 7800X. I mean, they're not messing about here. Looking at my system, I mean, it's not the best. It's, uh, it's still got an AMD 5600X, and according to this, I'm sat between minimum and recommended. 
and even at recommended they're saying you can expect 1080 60 with the high preset looking at the gpus they're recommending for um, the recommended system requirements which is to say you should get 1080 60 at the high preset they're recommending a 2060 super or a 5700 xt or good old intel the rk 770 now to me Putting a 2060 with a 12700 would strike me as quite an imbalanced system. I would be thinking of something north of a 3080 to pair with something like a 12700. I know it's last gen, but the 12700 was and remains a cracking CPU. Go right to the high end for uh, ray tracing ultra and we start seeing cards like the 4080 being mentioned, which is fine, it makes sense. The engine is pushing the latest ray tracing tech Paired with the latest DLSS tech, I get it, it's the kind of game that pushes even the most modern, highest spec hardware to the limit, so it makes sense to recognise that a card like the 4080 and 4090 should be part of that conversation. But what stumps me is uh, this emphasis that we're seeing on the CPU that we never saw before with the old system requirements. Even for the Ray Tracing Ultra settings, um, they recommended a Ryzen 5 3600 or an i7-6700. Now we're seeing the likes of 12900s and 7900Xs being banded around. Is this some kind of foreshadowing of a massively CPU heavy game that's coming up with the expansion? And if so, what's changed? Um, surely it can't be that different to the original, surely. Let me know, what are you currently playing Cyberpunk on and uh, what are you planning to play Phantom Liberty on? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. For me, I think I'm going to try and make my 3070 5600X build last another year and maybe build an absolute monster next year with new CPUs and maybe new GPUs, although at the time of recording, current rumours are maybe that the 50 series is getting pushed out. I don't know, there's only rumours, so don't read too much into that. Um, so for me for now, I think probably a healthy dose of DLSS and going light on the ray tracing is probably what's required. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Please uh, leave the video a like if you've enjoyed it. It really helps so, so much. And uh, while you're clicking things, don't forget that sub button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And uh, don't forget to leave us a comment. Let me know what you're going to be running this uh, game on and what you're currently running Cyberpunk on. I'd love to hear from you all. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.